This Belmont Stakes edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also ready by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold hard cash with their over under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash sgp on your phone to join the SGPN group, and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to one hundred dollars. That's sleeper.com slash sgp, and make sure to download the SGPN app. For all of our free picks and podcasts, this is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN Let It Ride. Cox. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Crame dog. Oh, Sean, you're looking beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to join you here. Shades on over on the YouTube channel. Uh, They don't need to be on yet. Uh, We're not deep into the heat of the handicapping for the Belmont stakes. I, I mean, we also have to take a moment to just talk about Ryan's beard. That thing is just popping off. I, I think we got to like Ryan. What's your you know any uh, any views on the government uh, that we need to know about up top at the show? I mean, I can tell you a quick side <laughs> story of what happens when you wear a beard. You start getting profiled. Yeah. And while most people like myself find a beard to be beautiful, I heard someone say it's the uh, it's the dude makeup or the dude accessory, the dude jewelry. Um, but I'm at the school. I'm at a middle school with my uh, daughter who goes to the school, checking her in. She was a little late. We had to go to some physical therapy. No big deal. Because of this beard, I'm standing to the side of her. She's talking to one woman. Another woman stands up from the back (laughs) of the admin office to walk over and ask me if I needed help with anything. Well, well I don't just, know. Can I'm you? just here for some nefarious reasons yeah. at the school. Well, why? Why are you judging <laughs> this book by its beautiful, beautiful cover? I'll, I'll tell you this, Sean. This was meant to come off a little while ago, but yeah. I'm committing to it. It's. It's. Uh, at first, it was all about just getting some tape in the Vegas studio of the short hair with the long beard, the beautiful big Ben Roethlisberger yeah. look. And then it turned into just, uh, you know, it's still going <laughs> and people are commenting on it. People are pointing out that it's getting long. Maybe a bird might be living in there. Oh, there there's definitely some nest activities going on, but really in that beard. to tie it all uh, full circle. It was really just to impress our uh, guests coming up here. Well, we got a couple guests. We are going to be talking ponies. That's right. And of course, uh, if you're not betting on the the ponies, if you're betting on everything else, NBA, NHL, NBA finals eating up, NHL playoffs, again, uh, fantasy football right around the corner. Kramer and I are already doing a bunch of best balls, and why not get the ultimate fantasy football experience? Via Win Bet. That's right. For every 500 bucks you bet over at Win Bet, you can be entered to win. Uh, this is awesome. A two night stay at the Wynn Resort, which is great. You get a fantasy football draft experience at the Encore Beach Club, Kuching, and the two night stay for you and your entire league. Multiple entries are allowed. So why everyone gets on, and it's for every five hundred dollars between now and the end of July. So again, you you bet fifteen hundred bucks, you already have three entries. If everyone in your league does that, that's thirty three entries. Again, uh, got to do it over at the Win Bet app, or just go to winbet.com. Bet big, win bigger with Win Bet. Offered subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be twenty one or older and present in the state where play through Win Bet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call one 4700 Joining us to talk. Horses. He is our uh, our longtime friend from across the pond. You know him from the MLB Gambling Podcast. Hops on the Zed Run uh, Podcast as well. Man about town, Mister Malcolm Bamford. What's up, Malcolm? 
Hello, lovely boys. How are you? <laughs> Doing great. How? how uh, uh, see, if I had walked into a school and said hello, lovely boys, <laughs> then I would expect yeah, then, someone <laughs> to say something to me. Expect to raise some eyebrows. <laughs> well, I appreciate you calling in, Malcolm. Appreciate you're not uh, you're not in a bath. Which uh, again, I, there's a lot of. I feel like a lot of times you're checking in and hey, just hanging out in the bath, watching we, a watching a baseball game. We really have to get Malcolm uh, writing some sort of lifestyle piece. <laughs> my views from the bathtub. Munaf does take exception to me being in the bath for about eighty percent of my working week. Um, I have got a little word of warning for Ryan. You're saying um, about the beard possibly coming off. Well, I shaved mine off about five days ago, and it was horrific. Um, at some point, my face looked like a dropped lasagna when I shaved it off. Um, I couldn't look at myself for about thirty six hours. Um, so even now it's just about coming in. So it's not as bad, but just be very, very careful because in the time you've had that beard, things have happened underneath there that you won't necessarily know about. <laughs> yeah. They're going to so break the clippers if, steady, mate. if we got to take off uh, Kramer's well, beard. Uh, again, the, the key here is having a strict, no razor to the face mm. policy. Uh, the razor that I, I I'll, I'll pull back the curtain all the way, and I'm sure Chase has. Chase does look like a man who has well, a little, little bit more. Yeah, bring him on. Let's please. welcome on the Wolf of Oakland, the host of the notorious OTB podcast, also known from the Zed Run Gambling Podcast, also a beard expert. What's happening, Wolf? I completely agree with the dude makeup thing. This is solely to give the illusion that I actually have a jawline. And one chin. I look like Bobby <laughs> Hill when I lose this thing. Uh, Ryan, you Ryan's got like a sea captain thing. It feels like a more oh, burly, hearty, close to the face beard. I'm rocking a battle of Antietam sort of thing over here. Uh, what, that or you know, what just it does against the government. I don't know if you have this issue, and I'll go wide again. Let me come back into me. I have this issue where like once you get to a point, you actually have to do some sort of uh, we'll call it manicuring. Because it mm -hmm. start for me, it starts growing back out like a like a, it's like when two waves are crashing into each other, right? Like <laughs> you have you have it flowing both ways, uh, which is better than it kind of curving back into the neck and getting itchy. Anyway, long story short, yeah, no, the key is not putting the razor to the skin everywhere. Like sure. a razor has touched only the very top part of this face, and I'll be honest, Sean, this is kind of embarrassing to admit. I may have the same razor as when we still live together. Oh my God. Not That's the like blade, not, not, not the blade, but, <laughs> but, but, but it, yeah, don't use a ton of blades anyway. All right. Beard, uh, the beard session's over. We need uh we need uh we need like a SGPN beard power rankings. Cause there are some strong beards in the company moon off yeah. uh, the wolf. Uh, yeah, we got, we got to get that sorted. Kramer, Kramer, uh, climbing up the charts. I think, yeah. So I tell the editors, we need a, a best beard of SGPN. We need a, maybe a calendar best beard mania. A, if you're in the top 12 beards of SGPN, you make the calendar. <laughs> All <Yeah>. right. <laughs> We're moving over to horse racing. Uh, chase you shout out to you. You really, you really nailed the preakness. Oh so I'm going to, I'm going to give you a moment up top to tout on your on your amazing, uh, you hit the, what did you hit? The exact, uh, <laughs> everything. I, I feel like you hit everything. Yeah. A whole enchilada. And actually, I mean, I can't take the credit. That was his freakness. Uh, he went back yes, to his, right. his funky planet where he's fat slapping a bass guitar fast and loose. Uh, he went back happy with loaded pockets. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's great when a runner race shakes out exactly kind of how you expected. And, uh, that's kind of what how it went with uh, early voting or wire to wire. I'm hoping to, but I'm I'm two for two on Triple Crown show winners. Give you a third one today at least. I, I have a I think another mental note for the SGPN offices. I think we need a training course in touting. I I like Chase's modest tout there, but I think I think we need to give him. Some I'll air. give it. You got to sound like you're cutting oh, a, a wrestling yeah, promo. Yeah, there you, there go. you go. You know Ric Flair. Perfect. All right, we're gonna. Am I sweating? Am I supposed to be sweating? I'm sweating. I don't know. If Ric Flair, uh, yeah, the consummate guy of just sweating <laughs> constantly. All right, we're gonna talk Belmont Stakes here. Uh, card kicking off first. Couple a uh, couple pre races, obviously leading up to the main event of the Belmont Stakes. Okay, so we got uh, the Belmont Stakes day. Got a little bit of a uh, shorter uh, field sizes. I'm I'm pulling up some of your notes here, oh, wow. uh, Wolf of Oaklawn. Who do you like in these shorter races? I, I'm seeing Lone Rock, uh, Brooklyn Stakes, a winner. What do, What do you got yeah. here for the Belmont Stakes day? So. 
the Brooklyn, it's a mile and a half race. Uh, there's a horse entered here, Lone Rock, uh, the number one, yes, who apologies. should be, sh- yeah, should be the the top choice. Uh, this horse loves this distance. It's six tries at the distance. It's it's finished first five times. It's finished second one time. Uh, it pretty much just owns these other horses that are trying to run this really long marathon distance. This is a great horse to key uh, over other horses in an exacta to use as a single into daily doubles and really just kind of up the base with it. Uh, and if you catch the right horses underneath or in the following race, the race before uh, it's a great kind of free bingo square to utilize and, and so what, this what, is- real quick. Cause I'm sure some people might, sure. might be pulling up their, their local race book and they might be saying, what the fuck race number is this? Now this is uh, this- yeah. Coaches. Yeah, it's, uh, this is race five on Saturday, cool. the fifth race. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now I found it. Okay, sorry. And now the listener probably found it. <laughs> so that is that's who you like for the Brooklyn Stakes, Lone Rock. What about uh, what about some of the others? And now the the Belmont Stakes Day card. These are just the stuff going on. These the races leading up to uh, race eleven, which uh, is the the main event, right? Right. Uh, you know, sometimes you can find better value uh, in these undercard races. Um, and then especially for some of these and these ones with the shorter field sizes, there are some, they're not lacking for talent. There's some really, really studly horses here that you can, that you can utilize. Like uh, for example, in Ogden Phipps, you got Truska. This might be the best mare in training uh, on the dirt right now. Uh, get absolute burner on the front end. Another one that you can use similarly to how I said you could use Lone Rock. Uh, and then there's flight line. Uh, if you're on horse Twitter, get ready for your Twitter feed to just blow up with flight line references and tweets. Uh, Cause this horse is absolute freak. It's run three times <laughs> in its career and it's won by a uh, cumulative 36 links. Jesus. So flight line, oh. uh, uh, Latruska, are those also in race five or no, what? I got race seven uh, for Latruska. Okay. Yep. The Ogden Phipps race seven and flight line is uh, the Met mile race nine race nine. All right. Just getting all these, uh, all these nuggets down Just here, building out a little bit. Uh, what about you, uh, Malcolm? Any, any bits or bobs from these, uh, the Belmont stakes day card? Any, any leans here? I've got both bits and bobs. You'd be pleased to hear. So. <laughs> um, as um, Chase just pointed out, the various ways of handicapping this card, because there are some short, um, some small fields and um, the, that parley of those two um, that uh, Chase just mentioned first, the two scare, but I mean, flight line just seems like free money. Like talk about a look, take a hundred dollars. You'll win 60 bucks, take the 60 bucks and go and put it on a NFL future. It's a free bet. You I can't love go it. wrong. You'll have your hundred dollars back. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like finding money in the street. That price is three to five. It's incredible. <laughs> if you want to double it up with Latresca, um, just go ahead and do it. So yeah, those two do seem, especially um, in flight line is so visually impressive. Um, I mean, it's, it, it looks like it would have won pulling a cart in a lot of its races. You just mentioned the, uh, <laughs> the distance that it's won by. So um, yeah, flight line looks like an absolute so, monster. Uh, Latresca is a flying machine as well. And then there's a, there's a couple of other more wide open races where you can stay single after that. Now well, we're real quick yes. because I think this is something else. Maybe some of our listeners might be doing right now. Let's say you were <laughs> trying to build a pick three starting race seven and you slot in Latruska and flight line. Is there a horse in race eight that either of you think maybe I should, uh, or the listeners should throw this dart on? I would go uh, with a couple horses. I would spread out here. Ooh. I would use arrest me red. Okay. Uh, I would also use the, let's see uh true valor uh, is another one as okay. well as gear jockey. Oh, gear jockey. I like that. Okay. So gear jockey, true valor. Those are some of the longer shots you like for race eight, but um, arrest me red. Kind of the, kind of the favorite coming out. No, oh, I, I'm all right. This is going on the slip real quick though. Like let's say you were just going to put a massive bet on either flight line or Latruska <laughs> of those two. What would you, what would you is the sure of sure. I cannot right. for the life of me lose this money. It will call it will damage my relationship with my wife. Would you go flight line or Latruska Malcolm? Flightline, uh, right? Flightline's opponents, flightline's opponents haven't 
seen which way that horse went so far. Um, it's just been gone. Like, honestly, finding money in the street. I love it. Love it. And uh, Chase, I, I assume you're on a similar path here with between Latruska and flight line, both uh, pretty, pretty heavy favorites, but both feel like good locks. If you really had to choose, if you were just going to make <laughs> one bet to win it all back, you would go flight line over mm-hmm. Latruska. I would actually, uh, for value's sake, would go Latrusco over flight line. Um, f- flight line will be one to five, two to five, at, maybe <laughs> okay. three to five at its longest. Uh, Latrusca, you still have a, a chance of maybe still getting even money plus. Oh, okay. Uh, um, so, I mean, M- Mal is right. Based on everything that we've seen of flight line, flight line is, looks like the, the more sure winner. Um, there's a couple of questions though. Like has the horses never shipped before, uh, you know, to the East coast, you know, that's tough for some people has never ran at this distance before. I have that question too. I, I would hate to, uh, you know, ruin my kids <laughs> chances of attending college because, you know, I went all in on, on flight line. Um, but I mean, everything about it says most logical winner of the day. So yeah. okay, I agree if, and disagree with Mal. If I could find a college education on the street, like Malcolm's describing. Yeah. I, I got some equity in my house right now. I mean, well, that, there, maybe we can s- send Colby to college. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, air raid university is slightly cheaper. Yeah, we, so. we offered Colby an air raid uh, scholarship. He he's, he hasn't taken it up. He has not taken us up on that offer. All right. So uh, Wolf, right. you, you like gear jockey and true valor as, as long shots in race eight to maybe Putting a exact a trifecta. What do you think those horses will close at, and and why do you think they they're live dogs there? Well, arrest me red. Uh, based on the connections itself, is going to take a, a just a, a pretty good amount of money. Uh, Westward training turf sprinters. That's what he does. That's so, a favorite. Yep. So a ton of money is going to head that way, and it's going to leave gear jockey. Uh, relatively, you know, forgotten, uh, doesn't have the most notable, uh, connections also in a few graded stakes, uh, last out hasn't really performed as much. The difference is that there's a really great pace set up here for gear jockey, uh, and also for, uh, the, uh, the eight or sorry for true valor as well, uh, where they're going to be kind of sitting off, uh, the turf's a little bit wet. We don't know how it's going to perform. Uh, it's not going to be friendly to horses that want to run right on the front end. And that's arrest me red. So I like, you know, these horses kind of stocking off the flanks with true valor and then uh, as well as gear jockey. Hmm. Uh, I mean, we should, it's always important to point out to Sean when something's Irish. So uh, true valor is uh, oh, love that horse <laughs> coming over from Ireland. 100%. What about you? Uh, what about you, Mal? Any, any thoughts here on, on race eight? Arrest me red seems like the the the, uh, the favor to kind of dominate, but uh, any other long shots or any thoughts on Gear Jockey True Valor? Yeah, I really did like this race a lot. Um, it was the, it was the most fun to handicap, and I've got a, a couple of different opinions here to chase. Oh, so let's I'm interested go. to get his take on mine. Um, yeah, Arrest me red. Um, uh, Wesley Ward Speedball. He's he's going to jump out and go. Um, there's a horse in the race called Gregorian Chant who is. 10 to one uh, at the moment, ridden by Joel Rosario. Uh, the horse is seven for 20 lifetime, but he didn't finish far behind a rest me red last time out and didn't have much luck in running. Um, he sort of got caught behind a wall of horses coming down the stretch. Um, I thought the only, the only issue is the draw. He's drawn 13, um, but over that sprint, it's not a huge problem. I think if you can stay relatively straight. He should be able to get across. I thought Gregorian Chant was a massive price. And then there was another one in the same race, a horse called Chasing Artie. Um, who completely blew the start last time. Um, it's a Safi Joseph horse, a trainer we've talked about before. Just a four-year-old as well. A lot of these are older horses. This thing's got a little bit of improvement in it. Uh, for example, I think, uh, is the rest of me read six, maybe? Um, and there's a there's an eight-year-old, Five. two valors, an eight-year-old. These, ho- these horses are exposed. Um, Jason Artie blew the start, lost its chance. Um, but I'll tell you what, it was closest at the finish. The sort of thing you wouldn't look back through the field and, and keep an eye out specifically for it. Um, but it caught my eye and at 16 to one, um, he was, he was never closer than at the finish. Uh, so with a level start or somewhere, um, starting somewhere better than he did last time. Um, I thought those two were huge prices for me. Uh, Gregorian chant 
um, which is 10 to 1, and Chase and Artie, which is 16 hmm. to 1. Ooh, maybe okay. I should uh, modify my pick three. <laughs> I'll just do well, do a pick three with Gregorian Chant and then another pick three with Chase and Artie. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm putting, I have okay. five horses in the eight now, but as long as Latruska. <laughs> And, uh, and flight line. I walk people through Ryan how a pick three works or a pick five. I mean, well, I assume our our audience knows what a parlay is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're just parlaying. Although you're not really parlaying against true odds more than you are a, a pool. Chase or Malcolm can correct me if I'm wrong. But basically, like everyone that bets into the pick or this pick three, that's the the pool. And so if you hit it, you split the pool. So you just have to pick it. three winners, right? Or yep. okay. Yes. And it doesn't matter races. You can completely well. It, pick I think choose or I think picks. I think pick five. I think all the picks. So pick three, four, five, six, whatever the track offers. There, it's always got to be uh, contiguous, right? Races in a yeah. row. Yeah. Yeah. The, the they are they're always sequential. Uh, it, you pretty much nailed it. it. It's a pair of mutual pool that everybody's betting into, so it doesn't work exactly like a true parlay. In fact, that's one of the things as a handicapper you have to gauge is. Would it pay more for me to do a win parlay here versus would it pay more for me to do like a pick oh. three? Um, but yeah, it's it's sort of a pair mutual hit and split it thing. But uh, yeah, that's that's one thing that people don't really do. They'll just kind of slam a, a double, you know, between two favorites when it turns out you could probably just make more money win parlaying between the two sometimes. Well, so I guess that's maybe and what's the difference between this and a daily double? A daily double is just a pick two, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, terminology. Right. No, I, you know this is what we're here for, right? Maybe, maybe when I was growing up at the Meadowlands, the daily double was like a, a more of a win parlay because I felt I, I felt like it always hitting the daily double was always a better payday than hitting like a. <laughs> and anyway, uh, shout out to cousin Mush in the chat saying, "Did Sean ever gamble before uh, before meeting Ryan?" Yes, yes, I definitely gambled wow. before meeting Ryan, but also wow. wanted to wanted, wanted to walk through uh, how how do, how you play a pick three because it's I, been a long time. I'll say this though, I, I definitely I haven't been to the aqueduct I'm in a while. Fairly like confident, Mush. I spent more time at a track as uh, you know, in my younger days than Sean did. Yeah, I would say we didn't have the Meadowlands. I mean, we I honestly went to the Meadowlands way too many times before I was we legally allowed to go to the we Meadowlands. We were not yeah, the track wasn't the hang for that kind of activity. We did have an OTB in Allentown, which was really a And I can't spot. stress to you, like for those of us who that used to hang out at that horrible, horrible uh trotter track slash OTB. Uh, the FanDuel spot there uh, is just as crappy. They just put some FanDuel posters up. It it's is like, really. <laughs> w- when we were out in uh, Jersey for some conference, we're like, "Oh, FanDuel is a live sports book. It is just, <laughs> it's just like a piece of shit that they put a FanDuel poster some TVs on. TVs up, get some shitty <laughs> chicken is, fingers. It is really bad. A lot. <laughs> There was just oh man, the service was also horrible. All right, we got we got some more races coming up. Before we do that, I want to shout out sleeper.com slash SGP. That's where you go to get in on all these sweet over unders, aka player prop parlays for the NBA finals. I think I went two and one uh last night. Uh Marcus Smart with that one three really uh crushed me there. It was it was so much fun sweating it out too, because I had Al Horford. Under one and a half three pointers is one of my picks. He hits a three like three minutes into the game. Got the rush of riding it out until my other uh, picks crept out there. But you can win as much as twenty x the money you put in. Perfect for uh, DJ only opportunities and. Uh, to help you get started, just go to sleeper.com slash SGP, hundred percent deposit match up to $100. Use our promo code SGP sleeper.com slash SGP. You can join our squad. You can copy our picks. Obviously you can fade them, tag us, get involved in the sleeper chat. It's a, it's a lot of fun terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. And we're also brought to you by athletic greens. Every day I wake up, I go, you know what? Awesome. Can't wait. Start my day with a nice glass of ice cold adaptogens, probiotics, whole food source, superfoods, minerals, vitamins. They got it all. And again, I feel great taking this stuff or recovery focus. Uh, energy feels great. I have it right before my cup of coffee and just feel better throughout the day. 
Make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SGP, athleticgreens.com slash SGP to take ownership over your health. Pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All the way over to race 10, the Manhattan Stakes, one and a quarter mile inner turf. Uh, Key now, handicap here because we are going to yes. be sitting with free money that we found on the street right after race nine. Yes. So we're, we're ready so, to reinvest. Now we found some free money <laughs> on the street. What are we going to do in race 10? I'm seeing the notes here that race 10, uh, the field may be a little bit more wide open than some of these other ones. Yeah, it's uh I think it's five to two favorite. So um, certainly w- more work in men's prices than the ones we've, uh, we've discussed <laughs> already. It's quite an international field as well. There's a, uh, there's a few Brits in there. There's some more Irish horses. I think there's a, there's a Brazilian in there and who doesn't like that. Um, so yeah, lots to choose from the, I came down with Highland chief here. Um, the price is six to one. Gufo is going off the favourite. Um, Gufo is at round about five to two, three to one price. Highland Chief is double the price. Now, Highland Chief beat Gufo last time in the Man of War Stakes. And he beat him fair and square. I don't see why Gufo is going to reverse the form. Um, I've watched this race. I've watched it a couple of times. Gufo has every chance to go past Highland Chief. He gets to his quarters and Highland Chief goes away again. Um, I think the further they went, the better Highland Chief was going. Um, and it doubled the odds. This was a bit of a head scratcher for me. I'm almost looking for Chase to to tell me where I'm going wrong because I think Highland Chief wins. What about you, uh, Well, For you, are you on Highland uh, Chief as well? I am. I am. It's one of the two oh. that I really like to launch a launch an upset bit here. Uh, Gufo morning line favorite. I mean, is a very talented horse. It's a horse that I'm really fond of. Uh, it's fun to really fun to watch run because he's got a, just a great closing kick. Last time he was weirdly like seven wide and I don't know what to make of it, but the fact that this race is taking part on the inner turf course, as opposed to the widener turf course at Belmont is going really doesn't play into Gufo's skill set. Uh, the reason is the inner turf has tighter turns because it's inside of the other turf track. And, uh, it really lends itself to horses that are out towards the front. They get the first chance to reaccelerate again, where the other horses are still slowing down to make, make the corner. Uh, I think the Highland chief. And I also think that, uh, an, another horse in the nine, uh, Santine, uh, which was a winner on Kentucky Derby day are going to be sitting in great positions. Um, I really like using those two for, for horizontals, like your pick threes, daily doubles, et cetera. Uh, but for a uh, single race, exotic wagering. I love Santine using Santine and Highland chief and like a, a trifecta using them both in first uh, Gufo is going to be there late. It's going to be moving fast late. Love putting that horse in second and then just kind of throwing in, just throwing shit at the wall in, in, in the third uh, to try to maybe either catch a price or, uh, you know, make sure that I'm, I'm not left out if I'm right with that opinion of having those two horses. One of those two horses win and Gufo finish second. So, so, you, well, yeah, so well, let's just say you were building. Um, <laughs> right, a and I both get real excited. <laughs> okay, okay, just uh, all right. So, uh, but, I can work it on some over here. A little right? open ended there with the third spot. So I got Highland Chief and Santina. I, I wouldn't butcher that name uh, in the first spot. I got. Uh, is it Gu- Gufo? Is that what you guys are saying? Horrible yeah, name. Or the, uh, let's 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 just take a quick uh, moment. To shit on the name Gufo? Like, come on. You're a horse. It's supposed to be like stud. It's supposed to be, you know, like cyber nut. And real, some, some alpha yeah. shit. And real quick. Tate Samurai. And real um, quick, yes. Sean, Sean, real quick, you we you had a chance to leverage uh the great Shakira when we were speaking about a Brazilian <laughs> another South American oh, sorry. horse. Shakira's on the second page, but I'll be in here. love, the five horse here. It's a Brazilian horse right there <laughs> going down. Yeah. So sorry, I'm right. sorry to interrupt. Kurt. So what do we, you got? in the third spot, who like who is that horse you would throw a dart in there as? Uh, this is uh, either you know feel either person feel feel free to field the question. Chan- <laughs> did did Chase just freeze? It's Chase. Chase is frozen. Okay, I'll take this one. <laughs> right, you need to if you got a pen, right? You need to write this down. If it's rained. Uh-oh. The horse you want is um, now. This is a French-looking name. I'm going to go with Lamparator, L apostrophe I M P. So Lamparator. Um, 
but needs a little bit of um, cut in the ground, that one. Uh, so it wants it a little bit softer. But there is some, going to be some uh, rain in the air. Um, I think it won on yielding surface last time. Um, so if there's a little bit of rain in the air, mm. uh, get Lamparito in. Um, apart from that, maybe Tribuven's the one. Um, but yeah, look at the weather. I'll stick, I'll stick with uh, Lamparito. Ooh, all right. So this was you trying to round out uh, your try box in race 10, right, Ryan? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, the the fact that Malcolm and the Wolf both paired up on Highland Chief and both uh, really like that uh, that that is just, I mean, again, that's all I need to hear. And uh, yeah, the the Goofo, the case against Goofo, they both made um, great points against it. And I love I love something that's going to be wide open like this. All right, we still have race eleven, aka the actual Belmont Stakes, to break down. Before we get to that, want to shout out IP Vanish. Make sure IP disappear. And why do you not want to give out your IP? Because if you give out your IP, uh, hackers can get your information, advertisers can get your info, prying eyes, your browsing history. You want all that hidden. You want it all safe, secure. You're doing money's transferring. You got crypto. Maybe you're hiding your location, trying to avoid a blackout. You can use IP Vanish. On uh, streaming devices like a Fire Stick, a lot of opportunities to use IP Vanish. Great to use, honestly, when traveling. If you're on some like sketchy Wi-Fi, the, the worst thing you can happen is have your stuff get hacked, have people access your browsing history. You don't want that. Take your privacy back today with IP Vanish. And again, seventy percent off their yearly uh, deal is is amazing. I mean, again, we use this at the office. I have it on my laptop too because it's unlimited devices. It doesn't slow you down when you're streaming. I know that was always my biggest hang up on uh, other VPNs. So go to ipvanish.com slash sgp. ipvanish.com slash sgp. We're moving on to uh, the main race here, race eleven. Before we get to that, any uh, Kramer was trying to round out his try box for race ten was, and you had mentioned, you know, kind of just throwing darts at the wall there for that third option. If you had to pick a dart you like the best uh, for a third place finish, who do you think that would be? I, I think that that you could wheel into that third place and be pretty confident. It's channel maker, Tribuvin, rock emperor and La Imperator. Hmm. All right. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Options. Sorry. I'm, I'm, fi- I'm, I'm, I'm fixing some <laughs> shit. Sorry. Keep, keep carry on with the show. All right. Uh, moving over to race 11, AKA the Belmont stakes, a lot of storylines uh, to get to for this first off a uh, rich strike making his appearance here. Of course, sat out of the Preakness looking to, to make his return here. Let's start with rich strike making his debut. Uh, Mal, what do you what do you think of Rich Strike? Took the Preakness off, but now coming back after that crazy Kentucky Derby win. Yeah, this is. Um, do you want to take the pros or the cons? Um, everything fell into place for Rich Strike to win that. Oh day. yeah. Um, there was a there was a lot of boxes needed ticket. He had to get in the race for one thing. He, <laughs> yeah. needed, he needed another horse to he needed another horse to drop out before he even got the line up. Um, but he got the early pace. He got a dream run along the inside. But saying that, he did it. He got he got it done. Um, and that's not the horse's fault. The horse didn't know what was going on. He just went and did it. I mean, it was eighty to one. Um, I don't mind that he skipped the Preakness. I think it's a modern day phenomenon that they don't run horses as often um, as they used to. The the cons for me here are, it's it's obviously he's not going to get the pace that he got. Um, in the derby to aim at. He's not going to get a cutthroat pace. There was 20 horses that day and there was eight or nine of them uh, were scratching and tearing to get in the front. That's not going to happen this time. Uh, so he's not going to have that pace to aim at. That's a huge problem. Um, however, the clockers who were at um, New York this week will tell you he's been working like an absolute beast. Mm. Um, so it might be he's just that good uh, that he was slightly overlooked. So yeah, um, this really depends on how how much you trust what you saw uh, in the Kentucky Derby, or whether you think the lack of pace uh, is going to is going to usurp him this time round? Yeah, Rich Strike right now, approximately running at like seven to two odds. 
I, I liked the storyline. I liked his eighty to one mm. long shot, but I, I mean, we like fading horses after the Gatorade. Stops. Yeah, I, I like fading teams. I like fading horses. It seemed like, mm. hey, that was a once in a lifetime opportunity. To your point, he's looking good, and maybe I would take a shot at him. But at seven to two, no. that's just not. Uh, Come on, we're a, we're a not, plus EV shop. Sean. Not that interesting for me. Um, I'll, I'll move it over to to the wolf here. It seems like everyone is loading up on we the people, we the people coming in uh, as as the big favorite, and and rightly so. He's uh, three for four, and he's won by like ten lengths, uh, meaning like he's won his last three out of the four racers, uh, or three out of the last four racers. He won the Grade Three Peter Pan at Belmont on May fourteenth by ten and a quarter lengths. So we the people is just coming in here <laughs> dominating. Is there any reason to fade we the people? I, I think we the people is your most logical winner of mm. this race, uh, and it's it has to do with the fact that this is a extreme pace scenario. This is what you call lone early speed. He's going to be up front walking the dog. Flavian Pratt gets up. He's great at doing that on the front end. Uh, you know he kind of threw a dud in the Arkansas Derby two back, but you look in the notes course was super washed out, just nervous, sweating, not really a great performance comes back in the Peter Pan and dominates. So I, I think it's going to be as easy as we, the people gets out on the front end. And then they just kind of watch him get smaller as he, as he runs away from him with no one really t- jumping on the grenade to press the pace. Plus you have the fact that uh, this horse, it's not a direct descendant of tap it, but it's a I guess a, a grandson of Tappet and Tappet is the sire who I think has won six uh, Belmonts since uh, 2014. Uh, they're just really made for this distance. Uh, he's got Tiz now on the bottom side, on the bottom half of the pedigree. It's this is a race that's more about pedigree than any yeah. other of the Triple Crown races because a lot of these horses are never going to go a mile and a half again. Uh, so I really like We the People's chance to to just get out front and control the speed. And then it's another one where I I, I just try to find value underneath uh, with a couple of longer prices. Yeah, yeah. All right. So We the People now, uh, Mal. Are you are you as strong on on We the People here? Again, looking as a as a two to one favorite here. The number one horse. Do you it, can you pick holes in in We the People's case to to win this Belmont? Yeah, when I saw Chase's notes earlier on, I, I bolted a little bit because obviously Chase is the man in form, and um, <laughs> I could take the coward's way out and just say, yeah, I, I like We the People as well. But We the People was way down my list. He got he got the smudge of doom on my notes pretty early on. Um, smudge of doom. I I love the rem. Now, what is that? Uh, I love yeah. that expression. I'm well, scared personally. It's the, specific, <laughs> it's, the, it's the specific smudge that I draw next to a horse's name when it's toast for me. I'll, I'll investigate the horse until I've seen enough, and then it gets the smudge of doom. Smudge of doom. Oh uh, no! All right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I draw the rem. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees, and I am going to fade we the people. Um, I've written down temperament, like which it. is exactly what Chase just pointed out. Um, he did get in a right um sweaty mess before the Arkansas Derby. Um, won the Peter Pan, but the opposition wasn't great. The track was a little bit wet. Um, it's just too short. It's too short for me. Um, the selection, my selection, isn't much of a bigger price, but I, I, I don't want we the people. I'm afraid I'm going to uh, I'm going to stay brave. So you're going, uh, yeah, you're not feeling we, the people, what about, um, and uh, I'm pulling it up right. I here. got it in front of me already. Sean. Okay. Uh, are you, we got, we got some inside Iggy. Yeah. This AKA random guy, random right. guy named Greg, who sent us all like a very long uh, direct message, making a case for nest nest, he, uh, which uh, here's the case maternal father, AP Indy. Uh, one of the best long distance runners of all time. Yep. Yep. Maternal great grandpa, Seattle slew. Yep. Smart stri- the smart strike line down to Curlin. Yeah. Pedigree wise. This is one of the three that I think the pedigree well, really fits. It, it get here's where it's get, it gets interesting. Paternal side dates back to native dancer over 50% yep. of the last, last 30 winners had his bloodline. So basically, Sire and Dam sides two of the best long distance runners of all time. Horse is a closer. Boom. Uh, Eight wh- to one, too. And and the only uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Only Philly running the race, right? 
Yep. And uh, another horse that will once again take the hashtag girl dad money uh, mm. at the window on, on Belmont Day. <laughs> I Listen, I'm not going to – I have no knocks for Nest other than – I don't think that Nest is necessarily, I mean, necessarily fast enough. And with the style of running uh, that Nest is going to do, if We the People gets out to an easy lead as he's projected to do, uh, that means he's just going to be sitting there running calmly and not really expending any energy. And it's going to put Nest in just a really weird position uh, where there's not going to be a tiring horse to try to run down late. It's going to be a horse that's, you know, just had a jog and then sprinted it at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Skippy Longstocking. I mean, you got to bet on it though, Sean. Because yeah. if we if we get the info, although oh, I will yes. say, get info into the DMs generally causes losers. Yeah, it's I'm, not, it's I'm not, not don't have a great track record on that kind of stuff. Uh, Skippy Longstocking, one of the uh, one of the longer long shots here at twenty to one. We've liked this horse. I, I feel like previously. Uh, Mal Skippy Longstocking, what's your profile on that horse going in here at the Belmont? Yeah, you need to be careful not to follow certain animals off the edge of a cliff, and this is one that um, <laughs> I'm happy just to just to pull back a little bit on. Um, yeah, we did like it, and it didn't run very well. It's had ten races now, and it looks exposed to me. I think we've learned everything we're going to learn about it, um, and what we've learned is it's not going to win. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, what about? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, no. I, I, I feel like Skippy Longstocking I, kept I, coming up. I just and wish I had wasn't him. wasn't getting it done, and wondered if the Belmont was maybe a better situation. But at no, some point, no. you just have to move on. It I'm was just, like when, back in the day when Ryan kept saying Sam Bradford, this is the year for the Rams to turn things around. Wow, you just have to say Sam Bradford, not a franchise quarterback. Real He's Dennis the Miller, the same cliff as that horse. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Exactly. Don't follow Sam Bradford off a cliff. Um, Wolf, I'm looking at your notes. You, you, uh, you kind of like creative minister as far as like horses in second or third to make a run here. I'm seeing six to one odds. What's your, what's your case for a creative minister? I, I mean, I think it's going to fit that role perfectly. Uh, the, these horses that kind of suck up into second dink into third. Uh, I mean, it's, it's simply, it's not fast enough to catch. It's going to be able to run into that second wave who should be kind of tiring out late. Uh, just a, a grinder of a horse, a, a bona fide board hitter, uh, that, that should be definitely considered in, in any sort of, uh, exotic, uh, the pedigrees there for the distance. I don't have to worry about it flattening out, you know, uh, exiting the second turn here. Uh, so yeah, d- definitely a horse to use if you're rounding out a trifecta. All right. Yeah. No, I like it. Uh, Mal, what about you? Any, any of these other horses on the board that we didn't talk about that you think worth, uh, worth bringing up here? Yeah. But uh, my first two, we haven't touched on yet. So, oh, well, let's go. Um, I'll cut straight. I'll cut straight to my winner then. So um, for me, it, not fancy price, but um, I'm not making the prices more done a goal. Yeah. Uh, let's go five to two. Um, I think the horse has wanted a little bit of extra distance, which he gets this time around. Um, he's got two graded wins at the track. Todd Pletcher uh, checks the boxes. Um, I don't think he'll get as far back as he did um, last time out. Um, he ran really, really wide, actually. Um, didn't get a great trip, but I think he'll, he'll be better today. In this um, smaller field, um, I don't think he'll encounter as many traffic problems. So I think more Donegal fits the profile for me. And... If you take Mo Donegal, you almost have to take Barber Road with him. Um, because they, they almost run uh, the exact same race in the Kentucky Derby. They run side by side pretty much the entire way. Um, if you were watching uh, where Mo Donegal was, Barber Road was sort of shadowed him all the way around. So also um came very wide and was closest at the end. So I was looking for one obviously at a bit of a bigger price as well. So I thought Barber Road at 12 to 1 uh, to follow home. Mo Donegal, and then I threw in Nest uh, as my third. Yes. So my trifecta is six eight six eight three, uh, which is Mo Donegal, uh, Barber Road, and Nest. Oh. Wow, Ryan, we have a we have a lot to uh, get to. I feel like we have uh, we just is we the people like maybe do we throw them in the super and hope they come in uh, for. Uh, in the top four, yeah. I honestly, that's what I'm thinking. Because uh, I'm hearing, I'm I'm kind of hearing Chase say this horse is gonna really bend at the whole field over. 
Uh, but then I'm hearing then Malcolm we say play. this horse is a fucking bitch who's got got some head problems. Yeah. Head, ca- I mean, he got the smudge of doom, but the smudge of doom for we the people could be <laughs> right. could be third or fourth place, right? Has Baker Mayfield got the smudge of doom? <laughs> he should. But also, Baker also had the smudge of doom for a long time. Wolf is uh, Wolf oh. is coming in hot. Like, are we really going to fade a guy who just gave us some awesome uh, preakness That's true. info? There, right? I have a lot to think okay, about. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Well, let's close. Those things. Let's go around. We'll let we'll let the experts go first. Give us some time to to lock in our things, uh, our bets. Lock in our things. Why don't we do a lock, and then a uh, some sort of dog? It could be it could be a, a try box, uh, a long shot just to win. Whatever whatever lock you like as your surest thing, and then a some sort of higher odds uh, piece to to round things out. We'll start with Wolf. Wolf, what do you got? Just the Belmont race, just the actual Belmont stakes. No, no, you can do the you can do the whole day. I mean, we know your your lock for winning the Belmont is we the people, so I'll I'll sure. pencil that in for you. But if maybe your lock is uh you know something else on the board, that's cool too. Uh, be an artist, be free. Yeah, I mean, I mean your your lock uh it it's going to be probably flight line uh, in terms of you know, the, the, the horse that is definitely going to win. You're not going to be rewarded, you know, greatly for it. Uh, if I had to give out a, 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 I guess a dog, a longer shot, then I'm going to go back to that Manhattan stakes. Uh, since Mal said it first, I'm going to let him lay claim to Highland chief. And, uh, I will go with, uh, uh, the, the nine, uh, Centine, which is seven to two. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, uh, not uh, a little, a little skimpy from the, from the long shot, uh, point of view, but, uh, I, I think probably could probably get some float on it. If not, then just pin me down for what what Mal said uh, with Highland Chief. All right, like it, uh, Mal. What do you got? What's your what's your favorite bet for the Belmont, and then something a little uh, spicier, a little crazy? Okay, I'm going to keep it straightforward. Mo Donegal wins the Belmont oh. five to two. Uh, so yeah, it's not a fancy price. The fancy price winner on the day is going to be in that Jaipo Stakes, the sprint that we talked about and that's the number 13 Gregorian chant 10 to yes. one um, get across from that wide draw. Um, I, th- I think it's good. It's got a really big chance. And as chase has left me, I'll th- um, in fact, I've got to throw out two more. What the hell Highland yep. chief, I think wins at six to one. Um, and then for a parley, uh, let's take those two shorties um, flight line and um, Latrushka, which if you back both of them do, or you might get, you might get two, two, two and a bit to one for your money, um, which yeah, that, is uh, which is perfectly acceptable. Definitely, I'm going to jump on the parlay train. I mean, same thing, <laughs> but I'm going to do those two. But I'm going to throw on Lone Rock from the uh, from the uh, Brooklyn Stakes in a race five. So Flightline, Lutriska, and Lone Rock on a parlay. Oh, Ryan! God, so much action here. I I feel like I'm going to spend a good hour just ed- firing away yeah. on some of these long shots. I, I like all of what everyone said so far. I know. Um, <sighs> so all right, pressure. So here's what I'll do. I'll give out for the Belmont itself. Give me a Mo Donegal Nest. We the people. Barber Road. Uh, Superfecta box. <laughs> As my lock, no. Uh, as a dog, there. That's that's so fun, <laughs> and I will be playing Mo Donegal and Nest uh, to win. Those are going to be my two plays to win. I, I like the We the People, but at two to one, you know me, Ryan. I I like to I like to run. Uh, uh, I like a, I like a, a nice long shot. The fact that they're both on Highland Chief there as a, as another dog like that as well, and then the lock. I think just uh just flight line. Uh yeah, just flight line. Keep it simple, lock that up. All right. I'm going to work uh from the bottom to the top as you like. Uh first thing I'm going to give out is a juicy pick 3 that ends with the final race. So, what are we going to do, Sean? Yes. Oh, you're giving out a pick uh, 3. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to make should I cover? Should I cover? No, we're not going to cover with the favorite. All right, we're going to make six bets. We're going to take flight line <laughs> in the nine. We're going to run that out with uh, Santine and Highland Chief in the tenth, and then in the eleventh, we're going to roll out Mo Donegal, Nest, and Barber Road. Six bets, 
you know, put it, put whatever you want to feel comfortable. And those are all pick threes, right? That's a pick. That's my, that's my pick three uh, portfolio for my, uh, I, I like the confidence. We're maniacs. I like the confidence that Malcolm brought with his <laughs> his Belmont stakes pick. I I, I am also going to ride Mo Donegal, and I'm going to pair it with Nest in a little uh, exact situation. And then the last one, because I heard uh, earlier in the show how much they love Latruska. I'm just going to put a football bet on that to win. Wow. Football bet on that. No pizza bet, football bet. And then like Ryan. Malcolm said, I'm taking a couple hundred grand out of the house, putting that on flight line, <laughs> free money, <laughs> found money. I'm going to the IRS window this weekend. <laughs> All right. Oh man. So much fun. Thanks as always uh, guys for hopping on. Love talking the ponies. Uh, make sure you check out Malcolm Bamford. You know, on the MLB gambling podcast, uh, make some appearances on the Z run pod as well. Tons of horse racing articles over at sports gambling podcast.com. Give them a follow on Twitter at Mal underscore B underscore sport. And of course, make sure you check out the wolf at of Oak lawn uh, and his podcast, notorious OTB also on the uh, Z run gambling podcast. And uh, Hey, you're looking to win some free gear. Take a screenshot of you submitting a review on Apple podcasts and go to the SGPN app, hit contest, submit your uh, screenshot chance to win free gear every Monday, AKA merch Monday. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the muddy green and he is Ryan. Sean, we got a CFL podcast. Kramer, let it ride. 